and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Osayuame Sali, and Sanzi and I are in studio. <laughs> With no makeup, Happy. just lipstick and lipstick. It's like holiday, <laughs> holiday mode, honestly. Um, it feels good to have a holiday. <laughs> I, I know, right? Right? I mean, I, I was driving, um, like, and the roads were quite free. I was yeah. so excited that, you know... My normal time, I would have because I was coming from the mainland. Yeah, yeah. I shout out to my sister. I spent the weekend <laughs> in a <her> house. Even though she made me cook all everything, cooking. <laughs> but I, I, I spent the weekend. I, I want to do it more often again yeah. because um, so my son is around and mm -hmm. he's unable to attend a proper teens church because oh. the Lucky Center in Desta they're yet to like establish a proper a teen church. Yeah, and he's you know he likes the idea of you know being participatory in church yeah it's okay we can do something friday night or maybe saturday morning we we'll sleep over and then after church we we'll come back so we had fun and given yeah, that today works. was public holiday we just said you know what let's just stay we're supposed to come back yesterday we yeah said, let's stay and just chill <laughs> and out just, just chill <laughs> Well, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. How are you? How was your weekend? How ah, did the holiday go? My weekend was good. Um, the holiday was kind of busy for me. Uh, I got my time to, my chance to sleep today. And it was so hard for me to get up and <laughs> come to work. You know, because I had like Friday, Saturday, Sunday was like super busy. But um, yeah, I'm here. I had a very productive weekend. And um, yeah, happy anniversary, Nigeria. Happy anniversary. And, you know, in conjunction with Enough is Enough, today we want to focus on the hashtag NSARS movement. Yeah. Um, now, so the, the interesting thing about, you know, the holiday, I mean, this particular anniversary, it just got me thinking, you know, Whilst everybody's celebrating Nigeria 63, I was just thinking in my head that we have a population where they say that 70% of us are young are people, you? yeah. like literally young, between the ages of maybe say 16 to like 35 and all mm -hmm. of that. And I'm wondering how do you, as a nation, how do you handle that kind of population where your, your, your I mean, the most vibrant of your, your people are largely young people. You must really pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I mean, in case you did not know, because it's in the month of October that the end sales happened, right. let's just give you a, a quick reminder. It says the end, uh, hashtag end sales, peaceful protest happened in October 2020. Citizens took to the street demanding an end to police brutality and sought justice for um, the victims. Now, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, that's the SARS, a unit of the Nigerian police established to combat violent crimes, such as armed robbery, kidnapping, and other uh, criminal activity. Over time, the unit became notorious for engaging in illegal detentions, torture, extrajudicial killings, and extortion of Nigerian um, citizens. So on October 3rd, 2020, a video of an alleged SARS officer shooting an unarmed man in Ugali, Delta State, went viral on social media. Yeah, so the incident fueled public outrage as Nigerians took to social media to demand justice for the victim. The hashtag NSARS began to trend on Twitter as people shared their experiences with SARS brutality and called for an end to the unit. On October 4th, 2022, the Inspector General of Police announced the suspension of all SARS and other tactical squad activities. Citizens embarked on a peaceful demonstration to express their displeasure and skepticism. The NSARS movement exposed the urgent need for systemic reforms and called for justice, accountability, and an end to impunity for law enforcement officers and this call still stands absolutely october 20th yes, you know that was the day that it happened and of yeah. course um this all this information you know is in partnership with with enough is enough and you know for us um, why we do this every monday is to just give a quick reminder that you can always always you know chat with the chat box the office of the citizens um, the number is 017 
Now, this platform helps you to know your governors, your senators, your House of Representatives members and the House of State Assembly members, local government chairmen and councillors. Now, it's important that you know these people so you're able to engage them. It's so interesting that, I mean, in the spirit of the um, 63, 63rd birthday, rather, for Nigeria, we want to discuss, you know, the youth, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and we are having this, um, what's it called, reminder by Enough is Enough on the yeah. NSAS events and the NSAS activities that mm -hmm. happen. All right, so in light of what we've just talked about, um, today we want to discuss Nigeria 63, right? And we're asking what's the future for her youth. And here's what we found in today's quote. Our society is rigged against um, young people. They have got to be very careful in this environment. Most rules have been put in place to make it very difficult for young people to succeed. And this quote <laughs> was from Atedo Peterside. Um, so earlier on this week, I think, yeah, we found a video um, that was uh, speaking to on social media. This video um, in an interview, Atedo Peterside, Me Bootcamp, uh, we came across this video on social media. He made the interesting point that got us thinking about Nigerian youth. And in the spirit of, of course, celebrating the independence, lad, um, as I'd mentioned earlier, we're asking Nigeria 63 have the, and uh, we're talking about the fate of her youth. And we have none other than Ola Kunle Shorinya who will be joining us to have this conversation. But first, let's run off on a break. When we come back from that break, we want to see what we found in today's news. All right, you're still watching Ways Now. The International Day of Nonviolence is celebrated on October 2nd, the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi, who is widely regarded as the father of nonviolence. The day is observed by people around the world to promote the idea, um, ideals of peace and nonviolence. Today is also my sister's birthday, my older sister. Happy birthday, Faith. Happy birthday, birthday Susie. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that, um, again, uh, some people have come to this lifetime and you know, they come with a very clear path. Mahatma mm -hmm. Gandhi was not yeah. just known for being a peaceful man, he was also known for being a man that was, you know, that had a very high level of integrity. And wisdom. You know, and wisdom, again, people sought his counsel, you know, mm -hmm. to raise their children. I mean, I remember the story of the sugar one. It always sticks every time I remember Mahatma Gandhi, mm. how a mother came and said, this boy eats too much sugar, eats too much sugar. And he now says, you know what, give me a week, right? Give me a week and come back after a week, I'll talk to your son. So she was now wondering, so she went and came back after a week, he spoke to the son and because the son stopped taking sugar. He mm. said, after that time you came, I was taking sugar. <laughs> I would not have been telling somebody not to take <laughs> sugar while I was taking it. So he oh, had to right. stop it first. Before he could counsel, I mean, that was how much integrity he had, you know. So, oh, wow. I mean, anything for peace. I, I, I'm always very, very, um, I, I know a lot of people hurt people. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I say to people, right, I think God has given me a special grace to be able to just move past the pain and the hurt. Because I realize that if you hold so much, you know, bitterness and all of that, it can result into violence, you know. Yeah. But if you're able to let go, it's easier for you to, you know, just you know, freely spread your wings and just you know, yeah and you go i completely farther. agree so for every time you know we have the opportunity to preach peace it has yeah. to go. and honestly i feel like that's something nigerians need Absolutely. right now just that avenue or that platform to just let go because a lot of nigerians are just walking they're walking angry people and so that's why when you're driving and you just cross over someone's lane in traffic they're calling you all sorts of I'm things because you. it's so much pent-up anger that people are just so looking much. for ways to express so it much. just let it out <laughs> you know all right so what did you find for us quickly okay so in the news i'm going to kano state the kano state governor Laji. Abba Yusuf has announced 200,000 Naira stipend for schoolgirls in the state to encourage them to attend school. I think that's pretty impressive. And it's not just that. Um, 
uh, during his announcement, he also said that, I mean, the 200,000, the, the budget is for 45,000 girls, which I think is a reasonable number because remember what they say, train a woman, train a nation. And he's also rehabilitating about, um, is he rehabilitating or re <laughs> what's the word for it again? Um, renovating, thank you, um, about renovating uh, government schools in the 44 local government uh, areas in the state and also about a thousand and one first class graduates will be sent for masters abroad and he's also bringing up uh, uh, introducing female school buses that is specifically dedicated to taking the girls to school and bringing them safely back home you know so I think he's doing a lot of reforms in in education it should be applauded well done Kano State Governor Yes, um, that's what I found in the news. I found it pretty interesting. Yeah, we had the governor, I mean, the governor's um, chief press secretary last week. And mm -hmm. I mean, he mentioned a few of these things. And I'm yeah. happy that it's actually coming to pass because we really must encourage, um, we must encourage the the right set of values. Mm -hmm. And you see, my story is just going completely opposite. <laughs> what happened? You know, so this Big Brother people, you know, even though some of us don't watch it, whether we like it or not, it's in the news. It's so breaking news. It. It's everywhere. You yeah. know, so, I mean, first of all, the young girl that won, she hails from Kogi State, mm -hmm. and she won 120 million, I yes. believe. And I think she has some other things that she won. So the governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Bello, has congratulated the Ile Baye lady, and he's saying that, um, what's it called, the winner, um, he's congratulating her, and the governor commemorated her, um, that, um, I mean, for being the winner for the All-Star seasons, he says, um, uh, what did he say now, he says he believes her victory is on, equivocally co confirms her brilliance, unwavering per perseverance, and uh, commendable humility. Yeah, just ask which question on that, please. Um, does it take brilliance and you mm -hmm. know to be in that house? I don't know. Let, let them not come for me. Well, it, it <laughs> takes, I would say, it takes, um, it takes brilliance it, uh, and being strategic okay. and emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence to, yeah, to okay. live in that house because living with humans is hard, you know. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you need a certain level of intelligence and <laughs> brilliance and wisdom and self control <laughs> character. Everything put together Absolutely. and a bit of drama too. <laughs> well, I think so too. But hey, your governor has congratulated you. I'm just saying that you see, when we do this kind of things, let's strike a balance. That's why mm -hmm. I like what the Kano State governor is doing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I've not condemned people going into Big Brother House or whatever, but I'm saying that the same attention that is given to entertainment, is given to the Big Brother, should be also given that same exact energy. Yeah. should be given to people that are doing well academically as well so that we create a balance because right now we have a lot of young people all of them wanting to go into full-blown entertainment creative mm -hmm. industry nobody wants to you know think about education but again there's an angle that Atelo Peter side said on that video and when we come back from it we'll be having our guests to discuss um, the topic for the day stay with us we'll be right back <laughs>